Hey there, we're looking for a few books to add to our spring reading list this morning. Maybe you are too. Here with six books from local authors we should know about is Misha Stone from the Seattle Public Library. Welcome back. Thank you, Coolest Margaret. glasses ever. Thank you. Thank you. I, I love it when we concentrate on the local creativity because we might not otherwise know. Let's talk about Lake City. So Lake City is a debut novel by Thomas uh, Constam, and it's about Lane Boucher, who uh, grew up in Lake City. He thought he'd left behind the car dealerships and storage facilities of, of the past when he married up and moved to Manhattan, but his marriage hits the skids. He ends up moving back in with his mom and her latest loser boyfriend, and oh, he great. just yeah he gets <laughs> desperate. He wants to get out of there. So it's one of those satiric send ups of the down and out in the not so well to do Seattle. Um, that is a perfect read alike for Lawn Boy by Jonathan Evison. Is it funny? It is funny in a dark way, um, and I definitely, you cringe, you recognize our city. He right. says that on any given uh, radio station, Hart or Led Zeppelin are always playing. <laughs> Which is not a bad thing. Right. Um, the chaos function. So Jack Skillingstead's uh, uh, novel, it's a thriller that if you like secret societies and time travel and high stakes scenarios that will bend your mind, this is a book for you. I do like time travel. Yes, it's a book that's set in Syria and Seattle. There's a, a war huh. correspondent, Olivia, who is there doing a story she and her boyfriend Brian get caught in the crossfire. He is killed, and then she winds up with this power to change events in time. She learns that when she saves her boyfriend, she brings him back to life, she's actually set in motion um, some things that may kill millions of people. So she has to decide, um, you know, um, what, what should I do? It's a butterfly uh, effect book that right. shows you that how your choices affect others and how with great power comes great responsibility. And the author is from? Is from West Seattle, and there's actually a great shout out to West Seattle Blog in the book as that's well. Great. Oh, that's very cool. Okay, let's talk about The Bird King. G. Willow Wilson is most well known right now for her Ms. Marvel comics, which, which feature a Muslim American superhero. Um, but this is her, her second novel. It's set in 1491 uh, in the last reign mm. of the Sultan in Iberian Peninsula. And it is a historical fantasy that is beautifully written about Fatima, who is a, a former concubine, her dear friend, a map maker, Hassan, and how they're on the run for this from the Spanish Inquisition. It's a story of magic and friendship and about what was lost when the East and the West fractured. And there's actual history in it as well. Absolutely. Which I think makes a, a book even fuller. You can imagine it, you can learn something, and sometimes that drives you to go look for more information about whatever it was you didn't know, which would be that yes. period of time. Exhalation. Exhalation. Ted Chang is considered one of the best science fiction writers living today. And if you saw the movie Arrival. I did and loved it. Starring Amy Adams is based mm -hmm. on one of his short stories. He writes short stories with themes of science and technology, free will and human connection. And he writes with this intelligence and emotional acumen that is remarkable. It contains two of my favorite novellas of all time. And I reread them because they really get at both your mind and your heart. Hmm. Now, what is his background? Um, you know, I think he's, he's a tech writer, so he has a background in computer science. Um, but he's been writing short stories for 28 years and has written 15 short stories that have just garnered 20, 27 awards at this wow, point. I need to go back and Slow read all of those. Slow and steady and just one that you, you never want to miss. And he lives somewhere on the east side. Yes. That is awesome. We need to get get him on the show. <laughs> um, let's talk about Maid, Hard Work, Low Pay, and A Mother's Will to Survive. Yes, so this is a, a memoir, and um, it starts with Stephanie Land's daughter Mia takes her first steps and celebrates her first birthday in a homeless shelter. Um, she has fled a, an abusive relationship and starts to enter the world of food stamps and housing vouchers and cleaning the houses of the wealthy. And it's a book that really shows you how um, challenging it is for the working poor to get by and get ahead. And it's uh, just a clear eyed and um, compelling memoir. I've heard a little bit about this book and, and I think you're right. I think it deals with the immobility of our society right now and helps people who may not understand how different it is right. for people trying to move into the middle class than it was maybe 50 years ago. And you know, she grew up in the Skagit Valley. Her, her daughter is seventh generation. It just shows you also how um, poverty sets in and how it's hard to, to right. get ahead when you don't have family that can help you up. Right, it's like social capital builds or yes. it unravels you yeah. know, through the generations, so that's a good one. Middle game. Shauna McGuire is one of the most prolific writers out there right now, and her work just gets more complex and, and more um, challenging and beautiful. Uh, Middle Game is a dark fantasy and it involves twins and math and 
this uh -oh. um, I Math. know I know believe it or not <laughs> and um, this nefarious plot that's been uh, simmering for hundreds of years and it's about these twins Roger and Dodger who were raised across the country they have some kind of quantum connection can start to communicate when they're very young um, through their minds and they seem as though they're two halves of one whole so it's creepy it's like what what is happening who are they are they really human and it's one of those dark fantasies that would be appealing to anyone who liked the library at Mount Char by Scott ah, Hawkins okay good when do you read you've got this full-time <laughs> job how do you read all these books um, I try to read as much as I can I also work with people who read a lot my my librarian colleagues and even the library patrons I serve they read circles around me sometimes so I find out about books from them. I will tell you that all these books would be wonderful for our summer reading program for adults, which starts again May 15th. May 15th. Okay, we'll put that on social media when it's time and share that yes. information with you. Do you take a book with you everywhere you go? Everywhere I go. I think that's part of the secret because yes. you always have 15, 20 minutes, not always, but frequently with nothing to do, and we've kind of gotten out of the habit of taking our books with us. And Metro. Metro. My, my rides on the it. bus. Yes. Made for it. Thank you very much. <laughs> we appreciate you. you being here. Up next, Seattle Times FYI guy Gene Balk is here with a breakdown of the latest set of surprising Seattle statistics. We'll talk to him after this.